Welcome to Should I Read It? Should I Read It is a weekly podcast that takes a deep dive into books. I'll provide a summary of the book and tell you how the ideas in the book relate across all the books we've covered so far. In today's episode, episode 11, we're going to look at how to have your best year ever with Michael Hyatt. I started my year this year by looking at a book about having your best year ever by Michael Hyatt. It's fairly common knowledge that most goals start well and then they die by February. The goal of Hyatt's book is to give us the goal setting and achieving tools so that our year can be the best year we've ever had. Hyatt has five key assumptions that form part of the book's foundation. His first assumption is that life is multifaceted and has the following ten parts. There's a spiritual part, intellectual, emotional, physical, marital, parental, social, vocational, avocational, and financial. His second key assumption is that all ten domains matter and that they all affect each other. His third assumption is that progress only starts when you get clear on where you are right now. The fourth assumption is that you can improve any of those 10 domains. And fifth, confidence, happiness, and life satisfaction are byproducts of personal growth. The rest of the book is founded on Hyatt's five steps to building your best year ever. They form the bulk of the book as Hyatt teaches us to walk through them. Hyatt's first step is believe the possibility. He starts where many goal-setting and productivity people start, helping us cast our greater future, our better tomorrow. His goal is to get us to believe that we can take control of our life. Here's a quote from Hyatt. If our habits of thinking are beneficial, we tend to experience positive results, such as happiness, personal satisfaction, even material success. If our habits of thinking are counterproductive, however, we often experience the opposite, unhappiness, dissatisfaction, and the nagging feeling that the deck is somehow stacked against us. He tackles this idea that we limit ourselves with our beliefs. even hints at the idea that once we get some success, we sabotage further success because we feel we don't deserve it. That idea, the sabotaging of your success, is covered much deeper in a book called The Big Leap. Hyatt also acknowledges that challenges will happen, and we need to believe we're up to it. He doesn't quite take it as far as Ryan Holiday does in The Obstacle is the Way, But if you're avoiding hardship, Hyatt would say you're on the wrong path. Here's a quote from the book. To accomplish anything, we have to believe we're up to the challenge. That doesn't mean it will be easy or that we even know how we're going to accomplish it. Usually we don't know. It just means that we believe we're capable. We have what it takes to prevail. Why is that important? Because every goal has obstacles. Hyatt wraps up his look at setting our brighter future by looking at the resources we have. Yes, each of us have different resources, but using our resources as an excuse for lack of achievement is a crutch. Here's a quote from Hyatt. Resources are necessary, but they're never the precondition for success. The perceived lack of resources is often a benefit in disguise. In fact, dealing with constraints can trigger a cascade of unforeseen rewards. For one, they force us to rise to the occasion and give our best to the pursuit. In fact, any goal that's big enough means you probably don't have the resources you need. Here's a quote from Hyatt again. If your goal is big enough, you'll probably require more and different resources than you assume when you start. But start. A lack of resources is never a good excuse to stay put. It means don't use resources as an excuse. Go as far as you can now, then you'll see further, so go further. I've heard it said that you don't drown by falling in water. You're drowned by staying in the water. If you're stuck, start doing something so that you're not staying in the water and possibly drowning. The second step that Hyatt gives us is complete the past. Let's jump right in with a quote from him. After limiting beliefs, the next most common barrier we encounter is the past. We tow it around like a trailer full of broken furniture. We can't fully consider the future because we're too tied up in what's already happened. We all have a friend who says that if they made the last touchdown in high school or whatever sports ball thing, life would be different for them now. They're letting their past dictate their future, dragging it along with them and using it as a crutch. Instead, Hyatt encourages us to perform a review of the past so that we can learn from it. Here's a quote from him. What were the major life lessons you learned this past year? Unless we learn from our experiences, we can't grow. He encourages us to use an after-action review. This type of review usually takes the form of looking at what went well, what didn't go well, and then the most important part, what are we going to do to fix the parts that didn't go well? We should 
be spending the most amount of time on that last bit, figuring out the path around the things that have gotten our way. Gratitude is also key to going forward without the baggage of our past. Here's a quote from Hyatt. The first way gratitude makes us resilient is that it keeps us hopeful. Gratitude is a game of contrasts. Our circumstances look a certain way, then something happens to improve them. Gratitude happens when we take notice of the distance between the two. That means we need to measure the gain, how far we've come, not the gap. The gap is where we want to be or where we see others as being already. Step three is design your future. Here's a quote from Hyatt. You don't usually drift to a destination you would have chosen. Instead, you have to be intentional, force yourself to get clear on what you want and why it's important, and then pursue a plan of action that accomplishes your objective. I love the picture drawn by the quote above. Don't be aimless. Have a goal in mind, and then you need a plan to get from where you are today to your goal. Hyatt also acknowledges that there will be pain on the way to your ideal future. Here's a quote from Hyatt. You and I should embrace discomfort for at least three reasons, whether we deliberately choose to or it simply happens to us. First, comfort is overrated. It doesn't lead to happiness. It often leads to self-absorption and discontent. Second, discomfort is a catalyst for growth. It makes us yearn for something more. It forces us to change, stretch, and adapt. Third, discomfort signals progress. When you push yourself to grow, you will experience discomfort. But there's a profit in the pain. The final huge, huge idea that Hyatt introduces us to is the three different zones of goals. His first one is the comfort zone. Goal zone one. Here's a quote from him. For goal to matter, it has to stretch us. That means it has to stand somewhere outside of our comfort zone. Your comfort zone goals are ones that are throttled back to reasonable. To something that you can say to someone. They don't feel scary. They're not your real dreams. They're just what you feel safe saying. Goal zone number two is the diff's comfort zone. This is the marathoner deciding to take a trail 50k run. It's just outside of their comfort zone. It will require different training and some new skills, but it's possible. And goal three is the delusional zone. This isn't just that 400 pound person deciding their goal is to run a sub three hour marathon in 12 weeks. This is also getting so many goals and tasks stacked up that there is no way you can ever do anything of worth with the time you have. There's a great book called The One Thing, which helps us address filtering down to a single action that we need to take. As you set your goals, look at the zones and decide which zone you're sitting in. You should be aiming right at the cusp of zone two. It should feel just a bit scary when you say your goal out loud. The fourth step in Hyatt's plan is find your way. Here's a quote from him. The truth is that anything worth doing isn't all fun. It's almost never fast, and it certainly isn't easy. Now, with a goal set, you need to move on to the most crucial part, accomplishing them. We don't want to be the type of person that has a set of goals and then finds the paper in 12 months and there's almost nothing accomplished on it. We want to be people that achieve great things. Here's a quote from Hyatt. If you want to go the distance, you've got to find a reason that speaks powerfully and personally to you. A big part of this is finding your why, figuring out why you do what you do, and who are you serving. For Hyatt, there are four keys to mastering your motivation so that you can accomplish your goals. First is internalizing the reward. The reward for the action must be something inside you, not just something outside, it's not some external goal. Number two is be realistic about the commitment. It's going to take hard work, so be ready to do that work. Number three is gamify it. This is like tracking streaks, or you've heard this of the Seinfeld calendar where you just keep the streak going. Number four is measure the gain. Don't look at how far you have to go. Look at how far you've come. I especially love the fourth item, measuring the gain. I'm working on my drawing skills for a future book project, and it's hard to sit back and look at what I've produced against the example. I see where I'm not as good, but then I look back 11 days into my 365 project and see how far I've come with those 11 days of effort. It's hard to measure the gain when your finances are on the line, though. When you start a new part of your business, and even as it's getting successful, it's not quite paying the bills. How do you focus on the gain instead of the gap in your finances? I admit, I don't have an answer to that. It's something that I'm struggling with as well, but I'd love one if you've got one. Hyatt also echoes perennial seller in looking for incremental change over the long term. Hyatt says, success is about incremental change, but we live in an instant gratification culture where we just don't want to wait. 
When we take control of our motivation, however, we can stay in the game long enough to see how that incremental change adds up to major achievements. And again, in Perennial Seller, Ryan Holiday says, Everyone wants a platform when they need one. People want to have a big list. They just don't want to lay the groundwork for one beforehand. Holiday is using the same idea as Hyatt. They're both saying that our work builds on itself, and that if we want something big to leverage, we need to start building it now with little steps. Then we keep it going. Step five in Hyatt's plan is make it happen. He says it's not enough to plan. It takes action to fully realize your goals. You just start. If you can't see the whole path, go as far as you can see, then you'll see further and can plan the next steps. Here's a quote from Hyatt. You're looking for one discrete task. You basically want to put the bar so low you can fall over it. Then, once that task is done, you can set the next. So that means pick one task to get started and then just start. Put together a review schedule for your goals and actions so that you can stay on track. Hyatt calls to this idea here and he says, reviewing your goals and motivations will keep you ideating, self-checking, and analyzing. And that will up your resolve and stimulate creative problem solving. And then again, he says later, one of the main challenges we face with reaching our goals is losing track of them. We get distracted and sidetracked by life, and they slip out of focus. We can lose months of the year before we realize we are not making progress. At this point in the book, he does make mention of his course and of the planners he sells, which will help us with our goals. But he doesn't leave us high and dry just to purchase more stuff from him. He provides us with three reviews we should be doing to stay on track on our own. His first review type is the quick daily goal scan to make sure that your three tasks for the day match up to your bigger goals. His second one is a 20 minute review weekly to stay connected to your motivations and to help push us through the messy middle. This is like a mini after action review or AAR on the week. And then we plan ahead for the next week. And third is the quarter version. This is a scaled down of the whole beginning process he does at the beginning of the book with us for casting our vision. Hyatt ends his book with the encouragement to celebrate our wins. Don't just achieve a goal and move on to the next thing without stepping back a bit and celebrating what you've accomplished. Here's a quote from Hyatt. When we achieve our goals or reach milestones along the way, we need to take the appropriate time to celebrate. When we don't celebrate a win, people, we don't validate it. We leave it hanging and make it just a bit harder to do the next goal because we cheated ourselves out of that celebration. Now, as always, the question is, should you read Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt? If you're struggling with goals and getting them done, then Your Best Year Ever is a good framework to help you get on track and stay on track. I think it's a good read, though it might not be my top read in this genre. That would still go to The One Thing and The 12 Week Year. You'll find links to those in the show notes, or if you wait, they're going to come up in the podcast later on. Thanks for listening to Should I Read It? To support the show, you can leave me a review in iTunes or a heart or a star in whatever podcast player you use. These help more people find the show. If you want to get more reading done, you should get an Audible membership. If you use curtismichaelca slash recommends slash audible, that will help the production of the show financially. In our next review, we're going to look at the networks of connections we have around us as we look at Connected by Christakis and Fowler. <laughs>